Today I'd like to look at a nice property of quartic polynomials. Well, not all quartic polynomials, only those that have two inflection points. So what we'll do is take a quartic polynomial with two inflection points, let's say it's this point and this point, those two magenta points, and we'll define a line out of those two inflection points. Then we'll see that where that line intersects the curve in those two other places. At that point, we'll measure the length from left to right of the segments created by this. So this will have length L1 between this intersection point and the inflection point. This will have length L2, and then finally, this last one will be L3. And then our goal is to determine all of these quotients. So L2 by L1, L3 by L1, and L3 by L2, and we'll get a really nice result. Okay, so let's get into it first with a simplifying step. Okay, so let's let the point x naught y naught be the left inflection point. So that'll be like this one right here. So let's say this is the point x naught y naught. And then we want to consider a certain isometry. And so notice that an isometry will not change like any of the distances in the plane. And so the isometry that we'll consider, it's simply a translation. And it'll take x comma y to x minus x naught and y minus y naught. So now let's apply that to our curve. That'll give us the new curve, y minus y naught equals x minus x naught to the fourth plus a times x minus x naught cubed plus b times x minus x naught squared plus c times x minus x naught and then finally plus d. So we might as well work with this simplified curve over our original curve given, like I said, it's simply a translation and it won't change any of these lengths. So it's the translation that corresponds to taking this point right here and putting it at the origin. Okay, so keeping that in mind, well, let's maybe expand this out and rename some things. So expanding and renaming, we'll have y equals x to the fourth plus what I'll call now a sub one x cubed plus b sub one x squared plus c sub one x plus d sub one. And now we're gonna use some facts about the structure of our new curve. And so first we'll note that zero, zero is on the curve. Well, it's an inflection point of the curve, but inflection points are parts of the curve. So since zero, zero is on the curve, that tells us that d sub one is zero because it's gotta satisfy the equation of the curve. Okay, and then now let's use the rule that zero, zero is an inflection point. But what does it mean to be an inflection point? It means the second derivative is zero. So in other words, y double prime evaluated at x equals zero should give us zero. But let's see, y double prime is simply equal to 12x squared plus 6a1x plus 2b1. We want that to be equal to zero when x is zero. But notice this bit goes to zero when x is equal to zero, so that tells us that in fact b1 equals zero. Okay, so putting this all together, we can actually consider a much simplified version of this curve, and it looks like this. We'll say it's y equals x to the fourth. Well, let's scrub out the stuff that we don't need. We don't need this, and we don't need this. And let's rename this next one, but I'm gonna rename it kind of in a strange looking way right now. It'll make the calculation a little bit easier. So we'll have minus two times capital A X cubed and then plus B times X. So that'll be the new version of our curve that we'll work with. Okay, so let's maybe start the next board with that version of the curve and we'll also have like a redrawn graph over here corresponding to our translation. So here's our new mock-up based on this translation that we've done that simplifies everything. 
So we've got an inflection point here at zero, zero, and that's all we really know. We've got the second inflection point over here, because remember we shifted so that the left inflection point was at the origin, and then we've got our two intersection points. So let's maybe find our second inflection point, and then we can label that on our graph. Okay, so that'll be when the second derivative is zero. So here we'll have 12x squared minus 12a times x. And now you can see how I chose this minus two times a. So let's factor some stuff out. We can factor a 12x out, leaving us with x minus a. Setting that equal to zero, we get x equals zero or x equals a. Of course, the x equals zero inflection point we already know, so now we'll focus on the x equals a inflection point. Plugging that into the original uh, equation of the curve will tell us that our y coordinate is, let's see, a to the fourth minus two a times a cubed, so in other words, minus a to the fourth, plus a times b, so plus a b. So I'll write this as a b minus a to the fourth. Okay, so now let's label this point right here. So it's got coordinate a and then a b minus a to the fourth. And actually we'll see that this a b minus a to the fourth is gonna show up quite a bit. So now let's maybe look at the equation of the line through these two points because that's what we need. So line through the inflection points. So since it goes through the origin, all we need is the slope. So we'll have y equals slope times x, but that's change in y over change in x. So that's simply gonna be uh, b minus a cubed times x. Okay, so that's our line. But now we want to find out where this intersects with the curve. So intersection with curve. And what intersection? Well, the intersection of this line. So that's going to give me this equation, b minus a cubed times x equals this stuff over here. So that'll be x to the fourth minus 2a x cubed plus bx. But now rewriting that will have the following. x to the fourth minus 2ax cubed and then plus a cubed x. But we already know two intersection points. They're given right here. We're looking for these other two intersection points. But luckily the knowledge of these two intersection points gives us an idea of how this should factor. It should factor as x times x minus a, because those are the x coordinates of those two, so x minus zero times x minus a, and then we've just got a quadratic left over. And how could we get at that? Well, I mean, perhaps we could do polynomial long division or something like that, but we'll just jump right to what it is. So it's gonna be x squared minus ax minus a. So let's maybe put a box around that. So these are gonna be our new intersection points. Okay, so let's see what the x values of those are. So using the quadratic formula, we'll have x equals um, a plus minus the square root of, oh, that's gonna be five a squared all over two. Oh, but check it out. That's gonna be a over two times one plus minus root five over two. So that's the golden ratio and then it's radical conjugate, interestingly enough. I guess that's kind of bit given away by this name up here if you notice that. So let's maybe see what we can do with that. Okay, so we determined that the x coordinates of our new intersection points were quite nice. So one of them was a times the golden ratio, which we'll call phi. And then the other one was a times, well, the radical conjugate of the golden ratio, which we'll call phi bar. And let's recall that those both satisfy this uh, quadratic relation here. That's really the defining characteristic of these two numbers. Okay, so let's find the y coordinates. Maybe we'll focus on this one and then I'll just like kind of spit out what's going here. So we need to plug this into our equation over here. 
So we'll have y is equal to, let's see, a to the fourth times phi to the fourth, and then minus 2a to the fourth times phi cubed. We pick up an a to the fourth because we've got an a right there, and then an a cubed built in to the x cubed. And then plus b times a, so I'll write that as a times b times phi. Okay, so that's good. Now let's factor a phi out. So factoring a phi out, we'll be left with a to the fourth phi cubed, and then minus 2a to the fourth phi squared, and then here we'll have plus a times b. But now let's apply that defining relation of phi. So applying it to this, what will we see? So phi cubed is phi squared times phi, but that'll be phi times phi plus one, using that defining relation for this phi squared part. But again, that'll be phi squared plus phi. We can write phi squared as phi plus one, giving us two times phi plus one. So we've got something like that for that. And then for this one, this will expand out simply to, let's see, phi plus one. So let's see, do we get some simplification? We get this two phi, we'll completely cancel with this two times phi. And then, well, this one will have minus two times one, so that'll be minus one in the end. So in the end, we'll have phi times a b minus a to the fourth, because that'll switch the order of the subtraction here. Okay, so that's the y coordinate for this. So let's maybe bring that y coordinate for this. And then as you can imagine, since we've got the same quadratic relation being satisfied, the y coordinate for this is simply phi bar times a b minus a to the fourth. Okay, so like I said, let's get these on the picture over here. Now we've got everything labeled and we can start calculating our lengths using the distance formula. So let's look at this length one, so that's the distance from this intersection point to the origin. So using the distance formula, that's simply gonna be the square root of, let's see, we'll have a phi bar squared that we can bring out of the whole thing, and then after that we'll have a squared minus this squared, or plus that squared, I should say. So a squared plus um, a, b minus a to the fourth all squared. So now we can take that phi bar squared out and let's recall that phi bar is negative. So that means if we take its absolute value, we get negative phi bar. So in the end, we'll have minus phi bar here and then the square root of a squared plus a b minus a to the fourth all squared. Okay, so that's L1. And now let's calculate L2, but that's simpler. It's essentially the same thing, but now we don't have any phi's in here. So all we'll get is the square root part. So a squared plus a b minus a to the fourth all squared. Okay, good. And then let's look at L3. So L3 is a little bit trickier. So we take the difference in these two and square them. That'll give us a times phi minus one quantity squared, and then the difference in these two, and then square them. So that'll give us plus phi minus one squared times a b minus a to the fourth all squared. Okay, but now we can factor out a phi minus one squared. So that leaves us with phi minus one times the square root of that familiar object. So that'll be a squared plus a b minus a to the fourth quantity squared. Okay, and now let's go ahead and calculate all of our quotients. So let's start with L2 divided by L1. Notice the square root stuff cancels and we're left with negative one over phi bar. But that's gonna be negative two over one minus the square root of five. But then we can rationalize the denominator here by multiplying by one plus root five in the numerator and the denominator. And we'll see that this quickly simplifies to one plus root five over two, in other words, phi. So the ratio between L2 and L1, well, that's simply phi. 
And now let's find the quotient between L3 and L1. So let's see, L3 picks up this phi minus one. L1 has this phi bar, but it's negative. But then as we saw here, this quotient was simply the golden ratio. This is, so this is gonna be phi times phi minus one. Oh, but let's see, that's gonna be phi squared minus phi. But then phi squared by our rule that used to be up there was phi plus one. So we have phi plus one minus phi. In other words, we have one. So the quotient between L3 and L1 is simply one. And then I guess there's one more that was our goal, the quotient between L3 and L2, but I'll leave that to you. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.